So today we're going to be making a house moving castle inspired granny square tote bag. So for this project I'm just using a standard worsted weight yarn. Um, I've had this yarn for so long that the label's fallen off and so I couldn't tell you exactly which brand but I know that I love, um, I love this yarn funnily enough and Lion Brown, Lion Brand Sewing, uh, check out Lion Brown Sewing. Um, Lion Brand Sewing has some good wear silly yarn. So for this project, I have some light baby's blue, some light baby's pink, which I've already used quite a bit of, and some light yellow, although um, if I had my pick, I probably would have gotten a little bit, um, like slightly darker, just for um, personal preference. But this color scheme does very nicely. So we're gonna start off by making our regular granny square. And so this is what it's gonna end up looking like. It is five layers deep and I crochet going from the corner out and start with a magic circle. So for this project, I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook or an e-hook um, in American terms. Um, and I know a lot of people use like larger hooks, but I like to use smaller hooks in general, just so that my stitches are a little bit more tight. Um, so let's get started on our granny square. Oh, also, I'm a lefty, so I'm sorry to any righties out there. Um, funnily enough, I'm only a lefty when I crochet. So I guess I, I taught myself how to crochet, so I'm sure that that is exactly what has happened. I taught myself left-handed, but I, I enjoy it, you know. Okay. So we're going to start by making a magic circle, and I know some people do like the X method, um, where they like wrap it around their fingers and make an X and go under. I just pull my yarn, swoop it into a hoop, and go in between the strands, wrap it, and chain from there. Everyone does it differently, um, so whichever way is best for you. I'm going to chain three, and then I'm going to do two double crochets. So this is our first little cluster. From there I'm going to chain two and I'm going to make another cluster of three DCs. Three double crochets. Another chain two, and I'm just gonna do that until I have four clusters total on this first layer. Alrighty, so once I have my four clusters, I'm gonna take the tail end of the magic circle, and I like to tuck mine through so that's not on the front side, and just pull it tight. If you haven't chained two at the end of the DC cluster, do that. And then I like to, some people go into this chain, which is the third chain. I like to go into the second chain. Just um, the very last one, I'll go into the third chain. This one I think sets us up nicely for what we're gonna do. And chain three. That's gonna set up our new cluster. And so what I like to do is yarn over my hook like I'm gonna start a DC. And then go into the hole in the corner, like I make a granny square, and we'll do our DC out of the corner. It's gonna look a little like lopsided, but it looks fine in the interesting. So, each row, the only time you're gonna chain two is in between the corner chains, and that's just a turn. If not, then you go straight from this uh, DC and yarn over and just start another DC. So all of the middle DCs will not have a space in between them. Well, they'll not have a chain in between them. So we're gonna do three DCs in the corner. Yarn and chain two. And then three DCs again in the same hole. And we'll do that all the way around.
Okay. So once we get back to this corner, I'm going to do like normal. So don't chain one. Yarn over and go into the corner space. You're going to do three DCs. chain two and we're going to go back into that second chain just straight in the middle yarn through and slip stitch and so that's going to complete our second round and we're just going to do this until we have five layers thick so we'll meet you back here then okay so once we have our finished granny square and it is one two three four five layers deep we are going to make a bunch more. So we have two, three, four, six, seven, eight of one color and five of another. And I just did the pink because I like the pink a little bit better than the blue. Um, and you can pick whichever one you want. So now we are going to lay these out and I'm just going to put a picture up on the screen because I don't have enough space here to lay them all out. But um, this is what it's going to look like when you lay it all out. It's just going to be like a big diamond. And let me figure out how to do this. Be back. Okay, so what I have here is the top part of the bag. And this is just going to be to show you all how I connect the squares once I've done them. So what I like to do is start on the longest strip, which is probably going to be either this direction or this direction, and you can pick however you want to attach them. I just like to do as many as I can in one go, that way it makes it easier in the long run. And you'll kind of see what I mean as we go. So I'm going to start with these two guys, and I'm going to use my blue yarn since that's the biggest sky that I have. I don't have much pink and I want to make some more of these. So I'm going to do make a little slip knot and then put my hook through and what I'm gonna do is grab these two guys and I know the pink is gonna be in the end so I'm gonna flip it around so the pink is facing me because I'm left-handed if you're right-handed we'll just flip the video and follow me just the same um, but I know that I crochet going this way and so when I get to the end, it'll be easy to attach this next square because we're just going to do it in one big go. Save some yarn. Alright, so I'm going to insert my hook. And I um, attach the squares this way because I think it looks really neat. And I'll show you what it looks like on the end. So we're going to go to the gap on this pink chain. And we're just going to go in through the loop that is closest to me. So it's going to be like back loop only but through both of them. So you're gonna go through the hook that's, or the loop that's closest to me on this one and the loops that's furthest away from me on this one. We're gonna go on a first chain on this corner. Okay, so once we've got that set up, we're just gonna do a slip stitch. And we're gonna do that same thing all the way down. So we're gonna go in through the loop that's closest to me on the pink and the loop that's furthest from me on the blue and do a slip stitch. Closest to me, furthest from me. And slip stitch. And we're going to do that all the way down. Okay, so when we get to the end of the square, we're going to do the same thing we did at the beginning. We're going to go through the first chain and the end, and slip, and do the second chain in the end as well, and slip. This is just going to make sure that your squares are really tight. So this is what it's going to look like at the end. And the reason that I do the little like back loop, front loop, Thing is because when you flip it over look how nice and neat an edge that makes because it's basically at doing back loop only you have that front line and I just think that looks really really nice and pretty 
So now we are ready to add our next grouping. And so I'm going to put these guys together because this is going to follow this chain. I'm going to face the blue towards me this time because I know that um, I go left to right. And what we're going to do is not fasten off on this square. And we're just going to go straight in, loop closest to me on blue, and loop furthest away from me on pink. And we're just going to keep right on slip stitching. And you just want to make sure that when you do this first one, you pull it so that it's flush with the pink. And that's just going to keep it together. So that'll attach all that. And we're just going to continue as we did the other one. So that has got me finished with the second um, square block. And so that's going to look like this when it's done. And so I'm just going to do the rest of this row. There's two more uh, squares. Three more? I'll have to look at my pattern. <laughs> I'm going to do this all the way down on the section and I'll come back when it's time to add the other squares. So. Okay, so this first section I did count is only going to be three because when we add the last one on this section, it's going to be going the opposite direction. So once you have uh, connected all six blocks, like so, the end we're going to fasten off. And so what I like to do is cut my yarn just a little bit, and then we're going to do a slip stitch and pull through. I only found this recently, but it is like lock tight. So our next step is going to be making this other diamond piece up here. So we're going to need another pink and another blue, and we're going to sew these two together like this. And so I'm going to make the pink towards me because we're going to need it when we get down to connect these guys. And we're going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to slitch stitch and connect these two like we have been. So when we come to the end of this row, we're actually going to connect it to this line right here. So I'm going to flip this little section over and flip it up so that the blue is facing me. And we're just going to keep going like we did the last time. So I'll just insert it into chain, first chain of this corner, closest to me in the blue, farthest from me in the pink. If I can find my string, here we go. And just keep right on slip stitching. Alright, and then so what I'm going to do when I get to this corner is that is the last one of the DC, and then I'm going to go into this first chain in the corner that we've already gone into, and we're just going to slide right back into it, and that's just going to keep it locked down. Um, and then we're going to go and find the last chain of the pink square, and we're going to keep right on going, and you're just going to jump right over this seam. I'm going. And then this is what we're going to be left with so far 
And so, next step. Okay, so at the end of that, you should be left with the big heart. And so, you can either go ahead and sew these guys down. But what I'm going to do, since I still have my yarn attached right here, is I'm actually going to go ahead and add this guy. And that's going to continue down for three more rows right here. So, what I'm going to do is flip it over to how it's going to be sewed on. Hold it up so that the pink is facing me. And then with my yarn, I haven't fastened off back here yet. I'm going to go into the first chain. And because I can't see it, I'm just going to go into the second chain. And pull right through, slip stitch. And then go into the second chain. And go back into the second chain. And slip stitch. And that should lock us in. So, and then we're just going to keep going right on down here. And so once I get to the end here, we're going to add another group. So another blue and another pink. And we're just going to flip those over. Since the pink is in front, I'm going to make sure the blue is in front for this section. And we're just going to keep right on going. Okay, and then once we get finished with this little section, we're going to fasten off because this is the edge. I'm just going to slip stitch. I'm going to try this. Pull through, tighten. Oh, that works much better, probably. <laughs> and so, it's going to be hard to see. Here's the heart. If you're going down, here's where we're at so far. So, we need to add. More. Oh no, just the two pinks. And they're gonna go right at the bottom here. And so now all, the only thing we have left is to attach these two pinks. And so since they're not like connected to blue, the easiest way to do this is to just do what I just did where we turn the corner right here and start on one side, connect it to the chains, and then just go around. And I could have done it, but I didn't think about it. So, so you could even go off of this slip stitch and just go right around. So, I did not plan ahead enough to do that. I'm going to do that now. Okay, and so once I've attached that, I'm just going to flip it over and see where we're at. So, all of the squares are part of the piece now. Um, and the, so now that's all that's left to do is just to connect all these loose bits. And so what you can do is just flip it over as needed and just continue doing the slip stitch all the way down until everything is just one cohesive piece. And I'll meet you back here then. Okay, so now the entire piece is one. Try to spread as much as I can. 
Um, but what we're gonna do is if you start at the heart, you go down, you find this one, one square wide blue piece before you get to the bottom. What we're gonna do is we're going to flip it over right in the middle so that the back side of the squares are facing us. And these little blue pieces are actually gonna fold over and attach right here. And so in the end, the back is gonna look something like this. And so all we're gonna do is just sew around the blue pieces and the pink and just seal up the sides. And you should be able to do this all in one. So we're just gonna fold these blue pieces over and we're actually going to start where the pink corners are at because this is where our strap is gonna be. And we're going to do the same slip stitch all the way around and then down the pink side and that's gonna seal it up. We're gonna do that on both sides. I'll meet you back here a bit. So I've sewn together all the sides and I've fastened off and weaved in my ends. So now what I'm gonna do is flip this guy inside out and you can kind of see what the bag is gonna look like eventually. It'll pooch out a little bit um, just because of like the weight of your yarn and I know my bluer yarn like weaves a little tighter than the pink yarn but I think it adds character so this is what the bag is gonna look like and so now we're gonna start on finishing the top and making the handle and so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've chained a hundred in my light yellow yarn and so that's and you, you can completely change this if you want to if you want a longer or shorter handle but I like to carry bags over my shoulder so I just wanted to make sure that this would be long enough for me to do so. So you're going to chain 100 and then we're going to single crochet our way back and I think I've actually chained 102 because I knew I was going to turn so chain 102 and then a neat little trick that I've learned is instead of single crocheting through like the chain itself what I like to do is go through the hump in the back of the chain so I'm gonna skip two humps and go through the little bump on the back of the third chain and I'm just gonna single crochet and let me do a couple of these and I'll show you why I like this better than other <laughs> chains Okay, so I've done about 10, and you can already tell, like, this is so much neater than a regular chain stitch would be. So I have the part that I've single crocheted with, but on the bottom you'll see it also looks like a single crochet. So when we're going to go around and do scallops later, this is going to be so much easier to see than, like, the standard loop that you would be going through. And I also think it just looks really neat whenever you're crocheting around both sides. And so I just, I've switched fully to doing my chain stitches like this now. So I'm just going to go all the way back and I'll meet you back here after I have single crocheted all the way back to the very beginning of my chain. Okay, so I've got my chain and I have single crocheted all my way back to the very beginning. And so what I'm going to do is on my left, your right if you're right handed, again just flip the video, do what you need to. <laughs> <laughs> to make it work, um, I'm going to go into the loop at the very top with the chain 2 and I'm going to single crochet and so that's going to attach it to the end and we'll attach this side whenever we get around to it. So now what I'm going to start doing is doing a scallop stitch and so this is going to be 5 DC's and so I'm going to go into this middle DC in this little group here and I'm going to do a regular DC and I'm only going to do it into the back loop because that's going to continue the like straight edge that we've done with all the rest of the squares. So five DCs in the back loop of the middle DC. Okay, 
Okay, so once I have my five, I'm going to go into the gap in between the DC clusters and I'm going to single crochet. And that's just going to tie that guy down. So we're going to do another scallop stitch, so five DC in the middle of this cluster. And another single crochet in the gap. And so it'll start to look like that. So I'm going to do that all the way until I get to this gap right here. So when I get to the middle, instead of going into this loop like I normally would through this hole, I'm actually going to go through this middle hole in the blue square, and that's just going to even everything out. So single crochet just like normal, pull tight, then we're going to keep going with our scallop edge along this side. So middle will DC, and the back loop only. Okay, so when I get back to my second peak on the right side or left side, um, I'm going to bring over my strap, and in the end, I'm going to act like I'm going to do a single crochet, and I'm going to add my strap to it. So I'm just going to go right through the very end of it, and so pull it through, and I don't think I did this right. Oh no, I did and finish off your single crochet like normal. So now what we're going to do is instead of continuing around the pink edge, we're actually going to work the inside of our strap. And so what that means is we're going to continue our scallops and this time we're going to skip every three. So one, two, three. So I'm going to do my double crochet into this stitch. And instead of doing back loop only for this one, I can just do all of it since it's all yellow. So we'll do five DCs just like normal. And then we're going to skip three. So one, two, and in the third one, we're going to single crochet, and then we'll just keep going right like that. So this is what your strap is going to start to look like. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the inside of the strap and I'll meet up with you when we get back over here. Alrighty, so I have scalloped my way all around the interior of the handle. And so at the very end I have one, two, three, four chains left. So instead of doing three, three, I'm just going to do two, two. So I'm going to go into the second chain, do my scallop. And it's really easy to like misjudge, miscount. I only did 100 because it seemed like a good length for me. Um, but depending on the length of your strap, um, you might have different at the end. So I just split the difference with whatever I've got. So, and then I'm going to go into the chain of my single crochet. 
and slip stitch instead of single crochet. And from there, I'm going to slip stitch again, cut my yarn, and fasten off. And so that is going to complete one of my straps and the interior of it. So then I'm going to flip it over and we're going to do the exact same thing on the interior of this side. So make another chain of your length, attach it, scallop around the inside, and scallop around the inside of your strap. And I will meet you back here when I have that done. Okay, so now I have attached both straps and done the inside scallops for both of them. And so now we're going to start working on the outer part. So that's going to include these two side pieces and also the ones on the other side as well. And then the outer part of the strap. So what I'm going to do is basically the same way we started on the other one. I'm going to make a slip stitch with the yellow yarn and you can start really anywhere. I'm going to start, um, hmm. oh, I'm going to start at <laughs> the edge of this strap just because I think it'll be easier um, for me. Again, flip it if you're right handed, I'm so sorry. Um, but what we're going to do is to just pick a place to attach our yarn. So I'm going to take my slip stitch and just go right into this corner piece, uh, just the hole where we've attached the strap at, and slip stitch. And then I'm just going to start scalloping like we have been before. So we're going to go into the middle stitch in the back loop and do our five DCs. So we're basically just going to do the same thing that we did on the other side, single crochet in the gap, and do your scallops all the way down. In the middle, we're going to single crochet in the gap between the blue instead of one of the pinks. We're going to go back up, and so I'll get back to you when we get over to our strap. Alright, and so when we get to the strap, we're going to do our last scallop as normal. So what I'm going to do is where this is where we first attached the strap that it is packed with. Okay. Um, I'm going to act like I'm going to do my single crochet for normal. Okay, so we'll go through the gap. And we're going to go through this first stitch in my strap and do a single crochet. And then we're just going to do the scallop edge like we did before. My puppy's having a bad dream. So we're gonna skip three, so one, two, and then the third one. We're going to start our DC, and it should line up with the scallop on the other side. So let me do one and I'll show you. And then we'll go one, two, three, and third one, single crochet. So you can see that it's going to start making like this circular pattern. But we're going to continue the scallops all the way around to when we get back to the other side. So I will see you then. Okay, so I have made it back around to the other side. And so I'm going to do my last DC cluster. So now what I'm going to do is to connect this kind of like we did on the other side. I'm going to go one, two, three, and it should be on the last one. Insert my hook. Also insert it through that corner chain and single crochet. And that's going to connect it to the side. 
And so from there, I'm just going to continue my scallop edge on around, just like we did for the other side, and around the other strap as well. And so I will come back when we finish and we get all the way back to the beginning right over here. So I am coming to the end and you can see where we started this outside row. So I'm going to do my last scallop. Okay, and then when I go to join, I am going to go through one, two, third single crochet from my cluster. If I can get it in there. There we go. And then I'm going to go through the chain two, pull through both of those, and do a single crochet. And then just because I know there's a gap there and I don't really like that, I'm going to go through the first DC in my first scallop and do a slip stitch. And then slip stitch again, cut our yarn, and we'll fasten off. So that is going to be the end of this journey of making this bag. So just weave in all of your ends, and then this bag is done. Thank you so much for watching and following along with me. If you feel compelled to, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what projects you'd like to see me do next, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.